Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. In this video we'll be talking about episode 9 and episode 10. There might be some potential spoilers from both movies, so just a warning before we start this video. In The Last Jedi, Princess Leia momentarily took a walk in space without a spacesuit. This was after Kylo Ren led a few First Order fighters on an attack run on her Mon Calamari cruiser and destroyed the bridge. Speaking of calamari, no one ever talks about Admiral Akbar. The most decorated war hero in the Rebellion, leader of the Rebel fleets at Endor and Jakku, is just unceremoniously blown out into space, and ends up dying a death that is more suited for the type of fish that is routinely served at Golden Corral. He was basically Nimitz plus MacArthur, but an alien fish. He deserved to die a better death. And one way they could have done it was to let him fly that Mon Cali cruiser at hyperspace speed into Snoke's ship. Anyway, Princess Leia also gets blown into space because of that same explosion. But because she's an OG Star Wars badass, she uses the force to slowly propel herself back onto the ship. Mary Poppins She manages to make it into the airlock and passes out from her ordeal. Now we know that sadly Carrie Fisher passed away before they were able to film episode 9, and it's been confirmed that they won't be Paul Walkering her face onto someone else because it's just a bit weird. I mean, it made Tarkin, who was already pretty creepy, even creepier. So everyone's kind of curious about what will happen to Leia in the next film. Originally it had been stated that episode 7 was meant to be Han Solo's film, while episode 8 was meant to be Luke's, and episode 9 was reserved for everyone's favorite princess. Sadly, it seems like not only will Carrie Fisher's scenes be limited, she might not even appear in the movie at all. After all, J.J. Abrams was only starting to film the movie this July. Kathleen Kennedy has even confirmed that the script had to be rewritten for Episode 9. Now, according to individuals who have seen an early copy of the Last Jedi novel, Princess Leia isn't doing well. She's suffering from solar radiation as well as hypoxia. So let's talk about that. If Princess Leia is human and suffers similar ailments when exposed to the vacuum as we do here on Earth, what kind of damage can we expect to happen to her? According to the footage, it takes Leia about one minute to fly back into the Mon Calamari cruiser. Before that, she was unconscious for an unknown period of time. So let's talk about everyone's favorite thing. What happens to a human body when it's exposed to vacuum? Well, first, the nitrogen in your blood begins to dissolve into gas, which will come to the surface of your skin. Your body will begin to look bloated and eventually look like a blow-up doll, but one that's much less likely to sell you a used car. Your body will slowly then begin to freeze in the vacuum of space, but because it's vacuum and not water or air, there's nothing to conduct the heat besides radiation. So freezing to death is one of your lesser problems. The radiation, however, will be a problem for sure, but that really depends on where you are and how close you are to a star. And how you react to that radiation really depends on how big of a dosage you receive. A small dosage might not do much to you, whereas a big one could kill you immediately, while other dosages in between might give you cancer or some kind of other illness. Now, if you're holding your breath before you are shot out to space, what happens is the air in your lungs expand and basically they explode. They're not designed to hold back that much pressure. So don't do that if you ever find yourself in vacuum. And judging by how fast the explosion hits Leia, she probably didn't hold her breath either. So it's safe to say her lungs didn't explode. So the other deadly thing that vacuum introduces to the body is a lack of oxygen. Within 15 seconds, the individual will pass out and within two minutes, the vital organs will begin shutting down and the individual will expire. Unless you're Tom Cruise. For him, it's closer to 10 minutes thanks to the protective powers of Scientology. If I were to guess, in The Last Jedi, Leia spends at least a few minutes before she wakes up and regains consciousness in space. She opens her eyes, which by the way is a pretty bad idea. The moisture from the surface of your body is the first thing to dry up. So if you're wearing contacts, don't go to back and open your eyes. See, we always give you guys very relevant advice here on this channel. Now it's possible using some force meditation power that Leia was able to slow down her metabolism and heartbeat. This would allow her to survive for an extended period of time. It's been documented that Force users sometimes instinctively use the Force when encountering life-threatening situations. So it's possible that's exactly what happened. It's kind of like when you black out in the forest right after a bunch of Ewoks jump you, and then wake up half-naked with blood and bite marks all over your body and Ewok fur in your mouth. Are you terrified? Sure. But are you alive? Yes. So let's take a look at what medical science says about Leia's condition. According to her diagnosis, she has what's known as hypoxia. Which, from first-hand experience, is not fun. Most humans contract hypoxia when traveling at high altitudes. Usually when humans go above 8,000 feet or 10 million meters, the body begins experiencing the effects of high-altitude sickness. 
As a matter of fact, most older airplanes only pressurize their cabins to the same oxygen concentration as 8,000 feet, which means you might be getting mild altitude sickness while flying on an airplane. Symptoms include fatigue, nausea, tingling, and basically every other side effect Viagra gives you, except for the bluish vision. So Princess Leia definitely suffered from hypoxia, but most of the time it doesn't really do long-term damage when you get shot into space, unless you get hit by like a TIE fighter or your organs fail because of the lack of oxygen being pumped to them. Something as simple as an oxygen concentrator or a few games at the craps table in most American casinos can get your oxygen levels back to normal. Solar radiation is the second diagnosis, and that's where Leia might find herself in a lot of trouble. Even short-term exposure to certain types of cosmic radiation can do severe damage to the human body. Especially if the only thing you're wearing is the disappointment that your emo son didn't have the balls to shoot you and let some random TIE fighter pilot get the kill, which makes your potential death seem a lot less epic. And also prevents you from putting a witty quote on your gravestone like, I knew I shouldn't have breastfed him until he was a teenager. Anyway, radiation can damage, mutate, or even outright kill cells. So like Taco Bell's Cheetos quesadillas, Leia's body is now a ticking radioactive time bomb. So with Leia now confirmed as not returning in the final movie, they can handle her departure in a few different ways, but most likely she'll end up dying. So the first scene we might see in the next movie is a funeral. It's an unfair and sad death for one of cinema's most beloved characters. If only Ryan Johnson and team had the foresight to get rid of Laura Dern's character, which, let's be honest, was basically a less likable dollar store version of Leia, the princess could have easily taken over Admiral Holdo's role in the film. It's sad because, like Luke, she'll fade away, but unfortunately her death won't come in the form of some heroic last deed. Instead, she'll die a slow, painful death from organ failure because she was ripped out of a safe enclosure out into vacuum where she was frozen and was bombarded by radiation. Which is exactly what Americans do to their TV dinners. On that disturbing note, we end today's video. Hopefully, J.J. Abrams will be able to salvage the messy situation he inherited from Ryan Johnson. I hope Princess Leia gets a send-off fit for a woman of her grace and badassness. For instance, she could have crashed a giant ship going at hyperspace speed into another giant ship, instead of letting some random character with no backstory do it. Well guys, don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. I just uploaded a one minute video uh, that gave a small tour of our office, and by small I mean tiny because our office is hilariously small. Special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there for helping us pay the bills. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.